Ian, could you talk us through the decision to go with Geordie at 12 over Roger? Uh, yeah, combinations from last week. They played two thirds of the three quarters of the game in that space with Bodie at fullback, Geordie there. Just felt that um, I guess the learnings and experience they had there just flow through to this game and maybe make some changes later on. Is that, so it's more a reflection of the way Geordie went at 12 as opposed to the progress you're seeing from Roger? Yeah, uh, probably the same answer to be fair. So it's based on the experience they had last week and just felt they they can start at a higher level because they've just had best part of 60 minutes of a test match, so that combination's a bit stronger. What do you like about Geordie at 12? Um, well, first and foremost, it was, a, it was a pretty unique situation because we lost two players within about five minutes of each other, so um, it was a late change, clearly, but it's a what-if that we have to deal with, um, and it's a what-if that we've been dealing with, I guess, at trainings, and so... Um, he went pretty good, he was a bit rusty on a few calls and showed a, probably too eager in many ways but but again there's some nice lessons there and you know Rogers had a couple of NPC games again so he's come back in and training well and a chance for him just to watch the game unfold and then see what happens. What, what skills does Geordie have that you think work at 12? Um, well, he's, he's in a Strong carrier, aggressive defender, um, can kick and a good communicator. <coughs> Had you envisaged starting Geordie at 12, or is it a case of need to must with the injuries you've got there? Ah, injuries, yep. In uh, Sam Hussain <coughs> was named player of the match, scored two tries last game, this game he's on the bench. Can you just talk through that decision? Yeah, look, last last test of a pretty big block, Sonny's had, a, um, had an outstanding series. Um, and so it's a chance where, you know, Cody's been uh, working hard behind the scenes, you know, and and we really believe he's he's in a good space now and it's a chance to, to inject Sonny in the second part of a game, you know, and to have a sort of a slightly different impact role than what he's had as a starting role. But, you know, we're pretty excited about that one-two punch for this particular game, particularly at the end of a end of a championship when, you know, maybe energy levels are, are down a little bit. So just to change the picture a little bit. Does Cody need to start to kind of leave that Argentina <coughs> test behind him? Well, he just, he's he's been preparing well. Though. He wasn't, he'd be the first to admit that wasn't his finest hour, but, um, you know, he's, he's a quality person, quality player, and I know he's really keen to, to play well for us. Ian, Darcy Swain has been given six weeks. Do you think that's the right punishment? Oh, it is what it is, you know. Said, you know, we spoke after the game, and then, and basically said, there's a process that people go through. We're fully aware of that. We go through that ourselves. So, he's got what he's got. Did you see it as an intentional act? Like I just said, I just, I'm not sure what the I haven't read the judiciary thing, but clearly he's gone through a process, and that's, that's what they've come up with. Can I ask, did he or the team reach out after that incident? Not aware of that, to be fair. I don't, either way, yes or no, I don't know. If he'll miss six weeks <coughs> rather than games, should a ban like that come down to matches rather than weeks? Oh, look, I, I've been through a lot of judiciary processes. There's a lot happens in there that I, I, I don't know what they've actually come up with, but um, I'm sure they've been consistent with what they've done in the past. Either way. Do you have a view on them being named in the Australian name team? Yeah, I think I've answered enough questions. Like, no, I... I the, I don't know all that, so the judiciary would have taken all that into account and come up with what they guess is a fear. I mean, we'll go back and, you know, our, our people will always review decisions to make sure we, we learn from the processes, but it seems to me that they've come up with a pretty satisfactory answer. Does this game have a sort of a knockout feel to it, <coughs> given what's on the line, Ian? Uh, it, it's got a, a final type feel rather than a knockout. I think it's, um, you know, if you look at the state of the rugby championship, there's a, a few unknowns, isn't there? And um, and so we, we probably can't, con you know, there's some parts we can't control because there's a game after us, um, but there's a massive part that we can control. And, you know, we can control the quality of our performance. Um, and and we know last week we're playing against a team that, uh, that we've got massive respect for. And pushed us to the wire and when we've 
taken a whole lot of lessons from that and we've got to make sure we've learnt from them. So for us it's just a it's a big occasion. We, we want to make sure we just go out there and, and put our best foot forward and, and from our thing we just got to do what we we've got to control what we can control, which is our performance. And then what happens after that we'll wait and see. Yeah, what's what's wrong what is it to be back on Eden Park where you've had quite a lot of success, obviously? Yeah, it's great to be here. You know, it's a it's a ground we love. Um, and um, and you know to play your last test in, in the in of the year at home here is feels good. Do you afford yourself five minutes during this week to look back over the past three months and think, gee whiz, we've been through quite a lot, and I've been through quite a lot, as in you? I've got plenty of time after this game to do that, <laughs> and um, probably going to. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll reflect on the campaign after this game. Like right now, all our energy is on, on Saturday, and you know, we'll do what we always do: reflect on it. You know, I guess reflect on the journey of the cam of the championship, and it's um, you know, it's been a very different one for all four teams in many ways. But um, it's also pretty exciting from a rugby championship side that we've come to the last game, and and no one really knows, and so. From that, I guess, from that perspective, it's exciting. In terms of personal journey, it's just the life of a rugby coach. Seb. Ian, what's wrong with Scott Barrett, and how, um, how close was Shannon Frizzell to being considered? Uh, Shannon, not really. We had to wait and see when he came in. But um, you know, I think at a pinch, he 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 may have been able to play, but with with a, a decent break after this, it just seemed the wrong decision. And so we've got a chance to get him 100% right. Um, Scott Barrett is, you know, we've been managing his Achilles um, for a month, um, and he's been doing really good. Um, but there was a little bit of a, I think you may have seen him getting treated in the last 15 minutes of that test, and he had a little bit of a calf tear tightness that's really just put that a little bit in doubt. So made that decision early. Ian, with Geordie's move into the midfield, did you consider <coughs> Will Jordan at fullback, and what made you go with Bowden? Uh, well, Bowden played three quarters of the game there last week, so again we felt like those combinations we'd already been using. Um, did we consider Will? Yep. And you know, you might see him slip back there at some point. Hardy's uh, taken over the captaincy when Sam's come off in games this year. How come Sam Whitelock is? Is captain this week over, over Artie? Yeah, well, a little bit of a copy and paste answer, but it's actually a very similar thing. Is that he's, you know, he led the team for a large part of last week. Artie wasn't there on parental leave, and and then we had a bye before that. So Artie's last contact with the team was actually the Hamilton test. So really felt it was better for Artie just to come back and get his get back into it, get his mind on on his role. You know, he's uh, you know a key part of our game plan, and so. We really just wanted to give him the week to, to get back in and get refreshed. It, it's, it takes a bit of adjustment when you miss a week and um, just feeling like coming back in and catching up with where the team's at, so that was the reason. If we, if we think long term, how important is Saturday for Akira, especially on home turf? It's important for everyone. Um, and if you look at Akira, he's you know, there's, there's plenty of competition. If you look at it from a personal side, there's plenty of competition in the loose forwards. That's the way we want it. Um, we, we believe in, in, in the skill set that he's got, that he can really contribute, you know, with the ball, without the ball. He's a different type of defender um, and a different type of carrier to the likes of Scott Barrett and, and Shannon. So it's important that he, he finds his way into the game and, and is able to utilise his strengths in, in that skill set. And so. You know, it's a big challenge because uh, the the Wallabies loose forwards, uh, you know, they played a very physical, combative game last week, and um, and that's what we're expecting out of Kira. Dalton, pardon? Dalton, what, what do you want from him? Because you know, same thing, really. Yeah. Same thing. It's um, it's there's a nice little challenge in, in that part of the game, and you know, the the Wallabies played a very sort of a. a a confrontational close quarter, um, tried to do a lot of grouping of our forwards through their carry clean type stuff and it's an area that you, you've got to be <coughs> strong defensively. After yeah. last Thursday's test, both you and Dave Reddy had different complaints of the referee. Um, Australia took them a step right into World Rugby about it. 
would you take that a similar move, or do you, do you think the officiating concerns got to a certain level that you've got to intervene like that? Uh, well, that would been smart, but can you remind me what my complaints to the referee were? I think you had a problem with uh, Callaway try. Are you talking about? Yeah, well, that was that was in response to questions on time wasting in an isolated incident, and so, and so, my my response after the game was more related to we've we've got to we've got to players have to learn to listen to referees, so that was mine. So. Um, so what was the next question, sorry? So, I mean, you obviously, I think you answered it. You, you obviously don't share the, the overall problems with officiating at the moment. Well, I think it's easy to say, it's a it's a cliche to say there's overall problems with officiating. I think that you've got to be really specific. I think it's it's tough on refs now. They're under a lot of scrutiny and when decisions, um, when people perceive that decisions have cost games, then they get put under the microscope, don't they? And you know, last week's has created an issue that's pretty pretty well talked about, but it's, um, you know, it's from our perspective, we've gone through a normal process. There's there's always things that we would like to see different, you know, in, in a test match, and we've presented our case in that space too, as, as we normally would. But overall, what I, what I liked about Matthew last week is he backs himself. He, he's strong, and if he sees a decision, he makes a decision. So does it mean everything's right? Not really. but. Um, that goes the same with all of us, I guess. But um, but you know they're working hard behind the scenes to to get things right, to, to grow experience, I guess, before a World Cup. So it's a it's a tough process for the refs. It's because, been of the because of all the talk and the debate <clears throat> over the end of the game from last week, do you expect this weekend's referee to clamp down on perceived time wasting as well, or is that a one-off? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to meet him at one o'clock. Can I come? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, is there a precedent with that now, though, Ian? Like, we've seen it called before, so do you think that sets a little bit of a precedent going forward in, around that time wasted? I, I just think... Look, I'm not frustrated by the language, but it's... it's there, there was... And I said it at the time, and I think I've been very consistent. If you look at the last decision, it's... The, the biggest issue out of it wasn't time wasting for me. The biggest issue is that when a ref gives you clear instructions, that at some point you've got to listen to it. Otherwise, what's the point of having a referee out there? And so that was my main point. And so time wasting, I guess there's every team will find ways to slow momentum down at certain times. And 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 so, but if if there's a move by World Rugby to to, to speed up the game and have less time wasting, well we're 100% in because that's what we want. It's been of your six championship <laughs> games this year, you've had five northern refs, is that, <clears throat> is that odd for a rugby championship campaign? Uh, look, I don't think it's odd, I think this is a campaign that World Rugby's um, made a move to try to grow some experience with a group of referees to, to look at options for, for next year with a wider tournament coming up. So. Um, I think that's probably pretty standard. I think what's been intriguing is some of the more experienced, there's a, two or three more experienced referees that have sort of been rested during the rugby championship, which is a kind of another issue. And do you find that intriguing or you found that an issue in a crucial competition? Um, well, I'm sure those experienced refs might have, but um, no, from our perspective, it's, it's fine. We'll take fallout? one more, please, so we're going to get the next one. What is the fallout? You know, it's been incredible, you know, the talking points from last test. What does that say about the state of the trans-Tasman rivalry at the moment? Um, I'd say it's alive and well and kicking, really. It um, shows a lot of passion um, and shows that you lot are all very interested.